ankle fusion with screws through the anterior approach. The ankle fusion with four screws consists of two 6.5 mm cancellous screws inserted at the open site through the anterior tibial plane into the central body of the talus. A third screw is inserted through a stab incision from the posterior crest of the medial malleolus to the anterolateral portion of the talus head. And a fourth screw is inserted through a stab incision from the distal lateral malleolus into the body of the talus. The proximal extensor retinaculum is cut open in a Z shape through an 8 to 10 centimeter long incision. To protect the neurovascular bundle, the joint is approached from between the hallosis muscle and the extensor digitorum. On the foam model of the foot, we palpate the medial and the lateral malleolus and mark the median incision over the center of the joint one-third distal and two-thirds proximal to the articular surface. In this exercise, we shall use a pair of strong surgical tweezers, a scalpel with a number 15 blade for the stab incision, and a scalpel with a number 10 for the incision. The incision is made through the cutis and the subcutis. In the patient, the retinaculum is cut open in a Z shape, and the extensor tendons are separated. For preparation deep in the ankle joint, we will need two narrow pointed retractors and two periosteal elevators, one with a slightly curved blade and one with a curved shaft. The soft tissues are pushed aside medially and laterally around the periosteum with the periosteal elevator with curved shaft and a retractor is placed at each side. For the curatage of the joint, in other words, the removal of the remaining cartilage and the sclerotic zones, we shall need a medium-sized sharp spoon a narrow rongeur, a chisel, a hammer, and a medium-sized bone spreader. We remove synovial fluid and fibrous and exophytic tissue with the rongeur, thereby opening the joint. The remaining cartilage, the sclerotic zones, and any occasional cysts are removed by curatage with the sharp spoon. With the bone spreader in place, it is easier to identify the middle and posterior portions of the joint. Alternately, using the sharp spoon and the rongeur, the remaining cartilage, shown as white foam in the model, is removed. The sclerotic zones are best excised with the sharp chisel until punctiform bleeding occurs from the freshened cancellous bone. Further curatage with the sharp spoon. The posterolateral compartment and the fibulotalar joint cavity are carefully scraped out. The retractor is then moved to the medial position and the bone spreader is placed in the lateral compartment, which has already been scraped out. The medial compartment is now scraped out and freshened in the same way, including the tibiotalar joint cavity. The anterior portion of the talus is curetted again.
For the screw fixation, we shall need a 2.5 millimeter Kirchner wire, a double drill sleeve, 4.5, 3.2, a 4.5 millimeter drill bit, a large countersink, a depth gauge, a double drill sleeve, 6.5, 3.2, a 6.5 millimeter tap for cancellous bone with T handle, and a large hexagonal screwdriver with holding sleeve. The fusion is always performed with the foot positioned at 90 degrees. Again, two retractors are put in position. The talus is temporarily transfixed to the tibia with a 2.5 mm K wire inserted through the plantar surface of the foot. Now the first tibial hole is made with the 4.5 mm drill bit, a good 3 cm above the joint. It is drilled, in very much a tangential position to the tibia, into the posterior portion of the talus. The hole is countersunk. The depth is measured. It is usually 45 to 50 millimeters, as in the model shown here. The hole is tapped using the 6.5 millimeter tap and the tissue protection sleeve. Now the first 6.5 millimeter cancellous lag screw with a 16 millimeter thread is inserted, making sure that the screw head is well sunk. The second screw is inserted in a similar manner. The retractors and the K wire are removed. The posterior crest of the medial malleolus is palpated approximately two finger breadths above the tip of the medial malleolus. The position of the stab incision is marked. The stab incision is performed with the number 15 blade directly onto the bone. The posterior tibial crest is palpated with the small periosteal elevator. The posterior tibial tendon is located dorsally to the crest. The hole is drilled into the talus head in the postural medial to anterolateral direction. This third screw is the most important screw since it creates the largest biomechanical stability of the fusion. Because the portion of the screw positioned in the talus is greater than the portion in the tibia, a 6.5 mm cancellous screw with a 32 mm thread is usually suitable. The fourth cancellous screw is finally inserted into the talus through a stab incision from the distal lateral malleolus. This screw could easily collide with the other three screws, so care must be taken when drilling. A 32 millimeter thread can be used here too. The post-operative AP X-ray shows a stable ankle joint screw fixation. The shape of the joint has remained unchanged. Varus valgus or rotational defects are virtually impossible in the presence of an intact fork. The first two screws reach from the tibia to the center of the body of the talus. The third screw is positioned in the postural medial to anterolateral direction and provides the most stability. 
the fourth screw, presses the lateral malleolus against the talus. The lateral x-ray shows the fusion of the talus to the tibia, with the foot correctly positioned at 90 degrees. The first and second screws require a 16 millimeter thread to create a lag screw effect. The third and fourth screws can have 32 millimeter threads. Thanks to the primary stability of the ankle joint, the foot can carry a full load in a special boot immediately after the wound has healed. The compensatory flexibility of the foot in the choparts joint is improved by walking in heel-to-toe fashion on the flexible sole of this boot.